Hi guys, Tyler here. Let's talk today about Elementor responsive problems and how to fix them. In this video, we'll talk about how to make your website tablet version friendly as well as mobile friendly. Now this video will be very basic and to the point, but if you need a more extended and extensive explanation of how this whole process works, check down below in the link at my other video that goes over all the details of how the responsive mode works and how you can solve particular issues. Before we jump in, I do wanna mention Elementor Pro. Elementor Pro is a premium plugin that allows you to bring in premium widgets to your site to make your site look so much better and way more interactive. If you guys haven't upgraded to Elementor Pro, definitely check out the link down below in the description. See what kind of price you can get for it. It also comes with Elementor support. So if you're running into consistent issues, you can reach out to Elementor via chat and they can even send devs over to help you out with certain problems on your site. I had one particular issue that I could not resolve and devs came into my site and fixed it in a matter of just minutes and I was able to get the support that I needed just because I was an Elementor Pro user. So again, check out that link down below if you're interested in upgrading. Now let's talk about how Elementor handles different devices accessing your site. If you look at the typical desktop PC monitor, it is a horizontal rectangle. If you look at the typical phone, it is a vertical rectangle. That means there's going to be different kind of sizing issues when you're accessing a vertical version of a site that was designed for a horizontal plane. But fortunately, Elementor has conquered this worldwide issue and allowed us to make changes to specific device versions of our site. Now listen up because this is very important. Let's talk about a rule that I have learned from how Elementor handles responsive sites. This took me a long time to figure out, but I finally figured it out and it makes sense now. This is very important. Mobile versions of your site will inherit properties from the tablet version of your site and the tablet version of your site will inherit properties from the desktop version of your site. And if there is no tablet version of your site set, the mobile version will inherit properties directly from the desktop version. Now, hold on, hopefully I didn't lose any of you. It's actually not that complicated. What I'm saying basically is if that we set specific settings on the desktop version of our site, those settings will apply to the tablet version and apply to the mobile version unless we set specific settings for the tablet version or specific settings for the mobile version. Let's jump into my computer to take a look at how this works. Okay, we're here on the desktop version of my site on my computer. Let's go ahead and design something very, very basic and simple to see how this process actually works. Okay, let's go ahead and drag an image into our site and see how it looks on the desktop version. Perfect, there's our placeholder image. And what we wanna see is we wanna see maybe some space on the sides of our image. And we wanna see that on every single version on the desktop version, on the tablet version, and on the mobile version. Let's say that's our goal for designing this site. Now let's take a look and see how the other versions of the site look. Now listen up, this is very important. Down here at the bottom left, you have a responsive mode button. If you've never clicked this button, click this button now. Go ahead and click it and you'll see at the top there's now a new toolbar where we can look at the tablet version of our site or we can look at the mobile version of our site just that easy. Now let's look at the mobile version of our site. So far the image is fitting in there okay, but we don't really have that space that we were looking for that we had on the desktop version. When you have the desktop version, obviously you have a bigger plane to work with. We have more space here on the edges, but on the mobile version, we don't have that. So here's what's happening. This image is being resized down to a tablet size and it's fitting 100% of the tablet width. And because there's no other property set, it's just inheriting those properties from the desktop version. And then over here on the mobile version, you can see if we click it, it's just inheriting those properties from the tablet version, which is just inheriting those properties from the desktop version. And it's all just set to 100% with no gaps on the side. Well, that works out great, except that on desktop, we have such a big plane that 100% actually leaves these big gaps over here on the side. And that's what we want. We want those gaps on the side. So how are we gonna do it for tablet and mobile? Well, I'll show you what we're gonna do. We can go ahead and edit this image. We can go ahead and go over to style and you can see width here is set right here. So we have the width, right? It's currently set to 100%. Now what we can do is actually right over here, it says desktop. You can go ahead and click this and switch now to a different version such as tablet. You'll see now that we've switched to tablet, it switches us to the tablet view here 
and we can go ahead and adjust the percentage here. So now we want those, those white borders on either side, maybe 68% of the tablet gives us those white borders. Now I know you're gonna be curious as to what's happening on mobile, so let's go over to mobile and see what's happening. You can see it's inheriting the properties from the tablet version. So now it's set to 68% of the width of the tablet and 68% the width of the mobile. However, let's say we need more spacing on mobile and not necessarily on tablet. What we're gonna do is go ahead and switch this over again on width. We'll switch it over to the mobile version, which go, goes ahead and changes our responsive system to set to mobile here. And then we'll just drag it down a little bit further. We need a lot of width there. Perfect, 40% Four, looks great. Now let's go ahead and look at every single version of our site and see what that did. First, we'll go to desktop. Desktop is still set. If we look at this, it's still set to 100% on the desktop. Now we'll go to tablet. Tablet is now set to 68% and you can see we've got those white borders on either side. Mobile is set to 40% and you can see we've got those white borders on either side and they're even bigger than the tablet version. That's how responsive mode works in Elementor and if you understand these key principles, you should be able to design your entire website out for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And the problems that people run into are usually that they don't understand that it is inheriting properties from the desktop version if they're not specifically defined otherwise in each other responsive mode. Now you just wanna make sure that any adjustments you're making are only set to the tablet version when you're in the tablet mode and then the mobile mode. If you need to go to mobile, you just wanna make sure that any changes you're making right here, the height, you wanna make sure it's set to mobile, the border radius, make sure it's set to mobile. And also guys, you can do this just specifically for one device. If you want your site to look different, let's say I want this image to have rounded corners, Let's go ahead and just increase this. You can see the rounded corners here on the mobile version, but if I go back to the desktop version here, you can see they're not rounded corners, they are square corners. And that's because we set those defined properties only on the mobile version, and the, mo the mobile version is the very bottom of the hierarchy. Okay, to wrap things up, I wanna throw one more scenario at you. Imagine that we only wanted rounded corners on the tablet version, but not the mobile version and not the desktop version. Well, the mobile version by default will inherit the properties from the tablet version. So let's go ahead and go over to the mobile version. We'll reset these back to what it was. We'll go back to the tablet version. Let's go ahead and set some rounded corners here for the tablet version. We're gonna make this really rounded corner so you can really tell here. Okay, the corners are really rounded. So the desktop version did not inherit that because it's at the top, right? So it did not inherit that. It still has square corners. The mobile version, however, did inherit that and we don't want that. So here's a method to actually only isolate the tablet version of using one specific property. I'm gonna go ahead and set the mobile version. Rather than leave it blank here and inherit, we're gonna set it down to zero. There we go. On the desktop version, you can leave it because it's not inheriting anything, or you can also set it to zero. Now, if we look at this, we have the desktop version with the square corners, the tablet version with the rounded corners, and the mobile version with the square corners. I really hope this has helped you guys understand how mobile responsiveness works with Elementor, and I know it took me a long time to figure it out, so hopefully this video is a shortcut for you. If you guys enjoyed today's video and it helped you out, please drop a like, and if there's something else that was not discussed in this that you still don't understand, please drop a comment down below and let me know. Or if you were able to solve this issue, drop a comment, let me know. It would really help me out and know what kind of videos you guys need. If you guys have not got your hands on Elementor Pro, check out that link down below in the description and see what kind of price you can get for this awesome premium plugin that allows you to do so much more customization, get support directly from Elementor, and add premium widgets to your website. Again, you can upgrade to Elementor Pro right below from the link in the website. And thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Tyler. I do put out a lot of Elementor videos, so if you would like to see future videos just like this one, be sure and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.